Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in with us today. Today, our topic is EDI, its role in the supply chain. EDI enables the computer system for one company to talk to the computer system of another company and digitally exchange data. The use of EDI software can greatly increase your efficiency without the need to hire more employees. Um, the way it does this is it'll reduce or, in some cases, eliminate manual data entry errors as well as streamlining your transaction processing. But I will save all of that good stuff for our presenter to talk about. Today I have Billy Ray Falls with me. Billy Ray is a part of the High Jump Software family, specifically from the True Commerce EDI Solutions Group. He's been involved in the supply chain industry for more than 15 years. He's been a part of the High Jump True Commerce EDI Group since 2008 holding roles in sales, business development, and channel sales development. Throughout his tenure, Billy Ray has worked extensively with the end users, partners, and resellers, and understands EDI extensively. Before I let Billy Ray take over, I wanted to share with you a bit more about High, High Jump Software and True Commerce EDI. High Jump is a global provider of supply chain management solutions. Their goal is to streamline both on-hand inventory as well as all the information that goes along with it giving you complete visibility from the supplier warehouse all the way to the store shelf. The True Commerce EDI Solutions Group is a part of the Hygiene family with specific focus on providing an end-to-end -end solution to stage ERP users. True Commerce has achieved the highest level of partnership with ERP partners. It's an exclusively endorsed EDI solution for stage ERP, and they've got more than 3,000 trading partners, 3,300 customers, for which they complete 100,000 transactions a day. So needless to say, you're all in very good hands for the topic today. So with that, I think we are ready to get started. And Billy Ray, whenever you're ready. OK, great. Thank you. And um, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is EDI and its role in the supply chain, how this transaction of uh, documents and information enables a streamlining of the supply chain and why it's important to you and your customers. Uh, what we'd like to do as far as objectives today is understand why retailers and manufacturers uh, mandate EDI and how your clients can comply with those mandates, which are required to do business with those companies. Uh, become familiar with the typical documents involved in the exchange between a supplier and a retailer. And then look to what you should look for during your EDI evaluation process. So what I'd like to look at first is just kind of a real world example of an expanded view of the process of EDI. And as you can see here, I sort of have four segments here, which in a certain respect make up a giant circle. Uh, and what we like to say is that sometimes in EDI, it's all about accuracy and efficiency. And it's about getting something on a shelf. You know, in this case, it could be a retailer shelf, it could be a manufacturer shelf, or it could be a warehouse or distribution outlet shelf. What we're really doing is sending a series of instructions of what, where, why, when, and how is being shipped from who and to whom. And then reconciling all of that financial information in the end between those two parties. So if you look down in the lower corner of the screen, we'll use the example of a retailer, there's a series of documents going back and forth between them and their supplier. Uh, and some of the most common documents you can think of, a purchase order, an invoice, a shipping notice which tells the information of what's coming to who, and then also any changes that need to be made to that order or amendments or updates of what's available and what's not. That's really what we have going on here. And we also have any sort of information and then tells them how the bank is going to pay them. But the important part is, is that the first component here is sending in a standardized format information from someone that needs to get something on a shelf to someone who's going to provide that item on the shelf. The next component up we have here is the warehouse and delivery system, which is also tied in. That supplier is now telling them what items to ship and where to ship it. And then the final component is that warehouse and distribution facility is then working with trucking or other methods of transport 
to deliver that to the shelf. They're now taking the instructions of who, why, where, when, and how, and passing it on to the actual carrier of information or carrier of the product with the information of where to deliver that. So you can see we have a big cycle here of how we're getting something that needs to be on a shelf to the supplier, to the warehouse, to the actual delivery, creating a full circuit of the EDI process throughout the supply chain. Now, if we were to ask, well, why EDI and what is this? Well, what EDI is is really creating a common language between all of those entities we just looked at at the slide, the purchaser, the supplier, the delivery, the logistics. And what we're doing is creating an electronic data interchange of those business transactions, whether they be the purchase order, the shipping document, the invoice. And what I mean by a common language is we're allowing all of these different computers, which may be while running on very dissimilar systems, to communicate with each other. We're essentially creating commonality. Um, think of it this way, and this is why so many companies engage EDI, is if you're a big retailer, you want every invoice that comes to you to be in the same format. You don't want to have 10,000 different suppliers with 10,000 different formats. Um, think how easy it could be for your customer to receive all their purchase orders in a standardized format. So what we're allowing to happen is the standardization of the data, if you will, so that everything is in a uniform format, which is, of course, great ease to both the supplier and the retailer. It's a true benefit being able to have everything come in in the same format and in a predictable format that you can also use with other parties, hence being able to tie in the warehouse and the logistics firm to complete the supply chain of the product. So looking at a little more detail, and this is EDI, the big picture, why is this important? Well, the first part is business growth. Uh, what you're going to see is, is that as a small company reaches out to do bigger uh, business with bigger and more complex entities, they're going to require that EDI format. It's kind of a barrier to entry, if you will, with doing business with those companies because, again, they need to standardize it. They need all their suppliers to do business with them in the same format. So it allows you to do business with bigger and more complex companies. Also, there's been a new business trend of the last number of years that we're all aware of, which is the uh, explosion of e-commerce. EDI also fits in there because Behind the scenes of the clicks that an end user is doing to order a product off of a website, behind the scenes, the instructions of how to deliver that product and where it's going to go, that's all being done behind the scenes with EDI. And of course, it's very important when you get into a dropship that you're taking data of the specific customer who will be delivered a good and passing it through a website collection point into the reseller that is selling it over to the supplier and then to the method of logistics that's going to deliver it to that person's store and also provide them a method to track that order. Uh, inside of there, one of the things that we're going to talk about briefly is the format that EDLI allows to give tracking detail to the status of the order throughout its life cycle. This makes sense in dropship, but also in retail environments and warehousing. And then finally, it's presence in the small business space. Again, what we're going to do is allow you to execute a critical business plan of bringing on uh, more sophisticated retailers or manufacturers. Um, but also, what we're going to do is reduce your overall administrative cost. And this gets a little bit into integration. We're going to bring things in and we're going to exploit that standardized format to create routines to allow you to get rid of errors that could be made by miskeying something or getting a fax and not understanding something on it, we're really providing the exact detailer, detail from the purchaser to the supplier and allowing that to be imported directly into your SAGE solution. Uh, one thing that I should mention at this point is we are the exclusively endorsed solution uh, for SAGE products. Um, so you do have the confidence of knowing that we are experts in getting data to and from any SAGE system. Uh, finally, you know, it does strengthen not just by complying with your customer's request, but it also strengthens your clients or customers' internal processes 
by having this exact data. They don't have to go back and ask questions later or clarify. They've got the exact data coming from their purchaser. So let's go into a little bit more detail. If we look at it now and we say, okay, that's great, but who are these people? I understand bigger and more complex. Well, if we look at these identifying the EDI requirements, if we look at it, almost everything around you is supported by an EDI transaction. So when you go to the grocery store, almost every item that you're going to buy off of a grocery store shelf got there through an EDI transaction. And again, the benefit is we're going with a standardized format. So these grocers are able to send over the information that is required, and your client customer can send back the required information to them. And this can include something like a tracking number, or perhaps in the case of food, they need to provide a lot number or serialized lot tracking in the event of a product recall down the road. Again, all of this information is specified in the EDI format of the end user's customer. So we have different maps and different formats. So while it is a standardized language, there's a little bit of customization that's required or allowed, if you will, by these customers that they're sending over. The same thing is true in the retail environment. Again, they're going to tell you what information is required, and your customer is going to be able to send it back to them. So again, whether it's Walmart or Target or Sears, all of them are going to be running a common purchase order, invoice, shipping information. But inside of that document, what we're going to do is map to the specific requirements. Perhaps some use a specific dedicated trucking line that's internal to that company, while others on a dropship order from a website want to know how you shipped it and when you shipped it and provide a tracking number. Uh, with our solution, we can meet all of those requirements and provide all of that data that's required. Finally, we're also able to tie it in with the method of transport, the warehouse, and the logistics, the three PLs that we see here over in the final column. Almost all of the large 3PLs are going to be able to support an EDI environment. It's crucial to the business supply chain. So let's take a look at this scalable EDI solution, if you will. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the ability to issue the first document, the purchase order. Now, again, each customer has its own specific EDI mapping format. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and they issue it out of their system, and the first thing it's going to do is hit the True Commerce Trading Network, TC.net. And it's going to come over to your end user and encounter their first series of mappings. We're going to call that the X12 Trading Partner Mapping. Essentially what lives in here is a series of templates that to verify that the inbound data to your Sage system is matching what was sent. So essentially what we're doing is making sure from the very beginning that the format that the retailer sends over matches their original format. If for some reason that it does not, we can then reach out to the reseller and confirm an inconsistency in what was sent over and possibly have them resend it because of an error internally. Or if a change needs to be made or an update made to the mapping, we execute that for you seamlessly. The next part that's going to occur is the actual translation of the data with inside the transaction manager. What we're now doing is taking that raw EDI and putting it into a human usable format. That could be a print preview. That could be the ability to export into something as simple as an Excel file. But most importantly, what we're really preparing it to do is go into a second series of mapping. That's the actual integration mapping. And that mapping is specific to your Sage system. Essentially, what we're doing is, is in one part, we're templating to your customer or retailer's requirements. And in the second part, we're now matching that to the specific fields inside of the Sage system. This allows you to take an inbound purchase order and whether scheduling it as an automated event or with a keystroke or a batch, sending it automatically into your Sage ERP system. The reverse is also true, that we can now take invoices that you've prepared inside of your Sage system and export them out so that we receive them into the integration mapping to create an EDI document, which will then flow back to the retailer or grocer or manufacturer. And again, after we've taken it out of your safe system and we can't convert it into raw EDI format, 
we then verify it and check it against that specific partner's mapping before it exits onto the trading network and is received by the retailer or grocer. The same would actually be true for a warehouse document. We're also sending it as an outbound document for them to receive or a shipping document. Again, it becomes a similar process throughout the life cycle. Two important things to consider here are that one, maintenance and support runs throughout this whole equation. So true commerce is the only dedicated end-to-end -end EDI solution that can support this under one roof. And what we're able to do is assist you whether it's at the network level, the X12 partner mapping level, the translation level, or the integration level. So you've got one resource for all your EDI questions. And your maintenance and support is included at no additional cost with True Commerce. Finally, you can see up there we have a cloud. Um, one of the nice questions that we get a lot is, do I need to run this on my server or can I build this as a cloud-based application? We can do either one for you depending on your specific requirements. And the two solutions are mirrors of each other. So they are able to achieve the same functions. It's really just which would you prefer to best fit your organization and we can accommodate that. Um, and again, one of the other nice things is, is that by having this scalable solution, as you add new customers and your business grows, all we have to do is now drop in that specific retailer, grocer, manufacturer that you're supporting, or a new warehouse, or a new trucking line. And that just goes in as a new partner mapping here. The rest of your system stays the same, so it's very easy to grow and scale your solution without having to reinvent the wheel every time you add a new business partner. Um, I'd like to be able to, uh, you know, if you have any questions, we can do a one-on-one -on -one session afterwards, uh, or I can open the floor up to questions. Um, but I wanted to give you kind of a high-level overview of what we're taking in and the importance that these documents have to the supply chain from the retailer to the supplier to the logistics. Uh, and again, we can support all of these with the True Commerce solution. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today and go ahead and open the floor up for questions. Thanks, Larry. That was really great. Um, I don't see any questions coming in, but we'll give it another second here. But if I, um, if any of you watching do have any questions, please reach out to Billy Ray. He's got his contact information right there up on the screen. Um, or, you know, reach out to anybody else on the True Commerce EDI Solutions Group. Um, I'm sure he or they would be very happy to answer any of your questions and help you out however they can. But with that, I don't see any questions, so I think we can wrap it up. So thank you again for all who've taken the time to watch our webinar. And a huge thank you to Billy Ray for taking the time out of your day to talk with us about all of this. Well, thank you very much for making the time, and um, hope everybody has a great afternoon.